Hey everyone, welcome back to Tan's Top 10 channel. So the Oscars are premiering this Sunday, so I thought today would be a good day to make my video of the top 10 films that have zero Oscar nominations. Uh, these are, some of these are pretty shocking considering some of these are like the best films of all time in their genres. So it's kind of shocking that some of these don't have at least one Oscar nomination. So I'm going to go through my list of top 10 uh, movies that I think should have at least got one Oscar nomination. Uh, I do have some honorable mentions as well. But before we get into the list, I did want to mention that I did start a TikTok account for this channel, Tan's Top 10 channel. Um, on that account, I kind of want to make videos, little short uh, videos about movies that I either picked up from uh, Best Buy, or online, used movie stores. So movies that I'm adding to my collection. I also want to talk about some movies that I recently watched, um, which I will be having a video very shortly about some of the movies that I watched in the past week. Uh, so watch out for that little video and maybe some reviews as well. Uh, some pretty much videos that I wouldn't make uh, for my YouTube channel, I'll put on there. So please make sure to go uh, look up Tan's Top 10 channel on TikTok and also follow the channel as well. So jumping right into the list, like I said, I do have some honorable mentions. My first honorable mention is a movie that came out last year that did not get any Oscar nominations, and I was really surprised that it didn't. One of my favorite movies of last year, The Last Duel. I love this movie. I saw it in theaters. It was me and two other people in the theater seeing this. Uh, there were two older women sitting right in front of me. Some parts were a little uncomfortable with them, but I thought this movie was awesome. Awesome direction by Ridley Scott. Some of the nominations, I definitely thought that Jodie Comer would get a leading actress nomination. I also thought that Ben Affleck and Adam Driver were also awesome. So I was kind of hoping for some nominations for them. Um, yeah, just, and why not just throw out a Breast Picture nomination? I mean, fucking Don't Look Up got one and Don't Look Up sucked. So Last Duel, one of my favorite movies of last year. So I was really hoping that would have got something, but no love for it. Another honorable mention, The Witch. Awesome horror movie from 2016, 2015, one of those years. Um, I think this could have gotten cinematography. Anya, Anya Taylor-Joy, she was awesome in this, so maybe some love for her. Um, I just think cinematography really, really shines in this movie. So, Next up, we have a movie that is pretty controversial. A lot of people either love it or really, really hate it. I lean more to the love it side. Mother. Um... Like I said, if you hate this movie, just skip to the next one I'm going to talk about because I'm going to show this movie some love. Um, I definitely think that Jennifer Lawrence could have been nominated. I think this is one of her best performances. She is excellent in this movie. Javier Bardem is a little more subtle, but I think he gives a really creepy performance as well. Um, the cinematography and Darren Aronofsky's direction definitely could have gotten a nomination. Like I said, if you like the movie... I think you'll stand by me with that. Um, if you didn't, move on. But just a really unique movie that I really liked. Two movies that did not get any nominations. Kill Bill, Volume 1 and 2. Um, I would definitely have given Uma Thurman at least something for this. She is excellent in both of these movies. I also, I mean, it's a Tarantino movie, so the script you could give easily. So, Kill Bill... Uh, at least give Uma Thurman something. A little lesser known movie, The King of New York. This has one of my favorite Christopher Walken performances who easily could have been nominated. Also has a balls to the wall, crazy ass Lawrence Fishburne, Lawrence Fishburne performance who I think definitely could have been nominated. Fuck, I love Lawrence Fishburne. He's awesome. So really, really awesome movie with some great performances. Please check it out if you have not. Also a really good script. So King of New York. One that a lot of people will agree with me, Uncut Gems. Adam Sandler should have been nominated for this. This was 2019, so he would have been up against Adam Driver in Marriage Story, which is my favorite performance that year. Um, Joaquin Phoenix won for Joker. Yeah. Leo, I believe, was nominated for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Adam Driver... Or Adam Sandler, sorry, definitely could have been in there. I also think you could have thrown the Safdie brothers in there for the direction. This movie is crazily directed, awesome. The script, really well made as well. So, Uncut Gems, a lot of people would agree with me that that should have at least gotten Adam Sandler an Oscar nomination. And my last honorable mention is going to be 
True Romance. Fucking love True Romance. This movie has possibly my favorite Quentin Tarantino script. At least one of them. So I think that definitely could have gotten nominated. I'm going to give a shout out to some of the supporting actors in here. Gary Oldman and Brad Pitt definitely could have been nominated. They are so fucking good in this movie. Gary Oldman specifically, he is just so crazy and wild. But... A really unique uh, score as well from Hans Zimmer, I believe, did this. Uh, yes. So maybe just throw some love there. But True Romance, give Tarantino a, a script nomination, definitely. All right. Coming in at number 10 is John Carpenter's Halloween. I cannot believe this movie did not get at least a score nomination. The score for this movie is so iconic. Um, so it definitely should have gotten that. I think you could have given Donald Pleasance maybe a Best Supporting Actor nomination. He's really good in this. Jamie Lee Curtis is fine. I wouldn't give her, I don't think I'd give her anything. Um, I also think you could have maybe done direction, cinematography, like the first uh, shot at the beginning of this movie. That is some excellent cinematography. So, um, and it also just creates like this eerie atmosphere in the suburbs. Uh, so I think they did a great job with this. Um, but mainly the score is, it's just iconic. Coming in at number nine is The Terminator. Terminator was not nominated for any Oscars, guys. Uh, first of all, any technical Oscars, um, sound design, visual effects, practice, like makeup when he fucking is cutting into his arm, like that is some great makeup. Some of the makeup involving like with his eye and stuff, not as great, but I definitely think there should have been something. The score, again, pretty pretty iconic. Uh, Linda Hamilton, I wouldn't have been upset if she would have gotten something, but I'm not too worried or too upset about that one. Um, yeah, but mostly technical. I think this movie should have gotten some nominations at least. Kind of crazy it didn't. Coming in at number eight is Menace to Society. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. And it is pretty, pretty crazy that, I think, who is this, the Hughes Brothers? Uh, yep, Hughes Brothers. They could have definitely gotten some Oscar love for Best Direction on this movie. The directing of this movie is pretty much perfection. Um, I also think the script is also really well made, or <clears throat> well written, sorry. But mostly the direction, kind of like with the, um, what's his name, John Singleton with Boys in the Hood but I think I like Menace to Society just a little bit more, so that definitely could have gotten some Oscar love. In at number seven, we have The Big Lebowski. Widely considered to be one of the Coen Brothers' best movies, I think that Jeff Bridges not only could have been nominated, possibly could have won for Best Actor. He is so damn good and iconic in the role of the dude. So damn good. I also think John Goodman could have gotten a Best Supporting Actor. He is so funny in this. Um, so much energy and charisma. Uh, the script, so many quotable lines in this movie. It's kind of crazy that just nothing got nominated for this movie. I believe this was shot by Roger Deakins. Yep, Roger Deakins. So maybe you throw cin cinematography in here. Uh, that's, that's kind of a shame that Big Lebowski didn't get at least something. Mainly Jeff Bridges' performance. All right, number six is going to be a little bit of a cheat because I'm going to put two movies in this slot. First one up is Scarface. Yeah, Scarface was not nominated for any Oscars, guys. And the other one is Carlito's Way. I'm combining these two because they're both directed by Brian De Palma and they both star Al Pacino. I think that he could have been nominated for either of these performances. Scarface is one of like his most iconic roles, um, but I do think I like uh, Carlito's Way a little bit better. But either way, both of these, like I said, uh, Al Pacino could have been nominated. Uh, Brian De Palma easily could have been nominated for Best Director. I'm pretty sure he was nominated for a Razzie for Worst Director for Scarface, which fuck you, Razzies. Um, Mich Michelle Pfeiffer maybe could have been nominated for this as well. She's pretty good. And his buddy, I can't remember, Stephen Bauer, uh, who plays Manny, he's excellent in this movie, so he definitely could have been nominated Carlito's Way, I like even more, like I said. So Al Pacino, nominated, could have been. 
Uh, Sean Penn gives such a wild, crazy ass performance in this movie. I'm pretty sure he was nominated for a Glo Golden Globe, so he could have got something. Um, and screenplays for both of those could have easily been nominated, but it's just kind of crazy that Scarface, one of the most iconic movies of all time, didn't get any love. Coming in at number five is a movie I've talked about a lot on this channel, The Thing. This is the second John Carpenter movie on this list. Um, this is probably his masterpiece, I would say, even more than Halloween. The Thing came out in 1982, and when it came out, a lot of people did not like this movie, which is probably why it didn't get any love from the Oscars. But looking back now, like this is considered to be one of the best horror movies of all time. Some of the best practical effects, which is where I'm going to start with my nominations. This definitely could have gotten a fucking honorary award or best some makeup, visual effects, practical effects, something. This should have got anything because this is probably the best practical effects you will ever see in a movie. Watch this movie. They still hold up to this day 40 years later. It's crazy. I also, I just got to give a shout out. Kurt Russell, he is so fucking good in this movie. So I would have gave him some love with a nomination. Um... Production design, this movie, you feel like you're in Antarctica at a cold fucking winter base. So I would have gave some love there. Um, sound design as well. When that one guy, I can't remember his name, but when his fucking arm is like, he's becoming the thing. And it's like got a crab arm pretty much. And he like lets out the scream. The sound design right there gets me every time. So also, uh... The score didn't get nominated for this movie. Ennio Morricone, one of the most iconic horror scores of all time is The Thing. And you know what's funny is that this score was nominated for Razzie, which again, fuck you Razzies. Ennio Morricone used this score in The Hateful Eight, Quentin Tarantino's movie, The Hateful Eight, back in 2015. That movie won the Oscar for Best Score. So, Ennio Morricone, who did the score for The Thing, took little bits, unused bits from The Thing score, used it in The Hateful Eight, and he won an Oscar for that movie. So, how did this not get nominated? Just like Terminator, the fact that this doesn't get any, excuse me, technical Oscar awards, it's just crazy. The Thing, what a masterpiece. Ugh, moving on. Coming in at number four is Reservoir Dogs. Possibly my new favorite Quentin Tarantino movie. I definitely think this could have gotten a screen, uh, original screenplay nomination. This is probably my favorite Quentin Tarantino script. Uh, a lot of people would say Pulp Fiction, which did win the Oscar. Um, I just really like this, this script, uh, the screenplay. It's got so many quotable moments uh, and lines. Um so witty and snappy i also think some of the performances you can maybe toss a nomination at i'm not not too upset that some of them didn't but um michael madsen uh harvey Keitel, steve buscemi all three of those were awesome performances um direction i think you could have gave something to and the editing as well because there's that scene where tim roth is telling a story the one that he's making up and like the scene of them going into the bathroom with all those cops in there and they're like, it's just edited so perfectly that scene, uh, cinematography as well, where they're like spinning around in that bathroom, just beautiful. So Oscar should have given, given uh, Reservoir Dogs some love that year, specifically a screenplay. All right, guys. So these next three are pretty big movies and I cannot believe that these three did not get nominated for anything. Number three is The Shining. Yeah, one of the best, not just horror movies, but one of the best movies in general ever. Didn't get any love from the Oscars. Jack Nicholson probably gives his best performance in this film. The guy has won three Oscars, and he didn't get nominated for possibly his best one. It's crazy. Also, Stanley Kubrick. This movie is directed to perfection. There is not a single flaw directing-wise with this movie. And he didn't get any love from the Oscars as well. Shelley Duvall, 
is amazing in this movie. I don't care what anyone says. She is incredible in this movie. She just evokes dread and fear so well in this film. And I don't get how she didn't get any love. It's crazy. Also, cinematography, the score, editing. Holy shit, this movie could have been nominated for, what, fucking 10 Oscars you could have thrown at this thing. Production design, the Overlook Hotel is an iconic movie location. So, yeah, The Shining, it's just, it's just crazy. Adapted screenplay, fucking Shining. God damn, it's crazy that didn't get nominated for anything. Coming in at number two is Zodiac. I have talked about Zodiac multiple times on this channel. It is one of the, my favorite movies of all time. It came out in the year 2007, which is probably the reason why it didn't get any love at the Oscars. 2007 is one of the best film years ever. So I think that Zodiac definitely could have gotten a Best Picture nomination. Uh, excuse me. I think this is David Fincher's best directed movie. Social Network is a close second, but Zodiac, I think, is best directed. So he definitely could have gotten something. Possibly could have won. Uh, screenplay. Holy shit, the script in this movie is fucking epic and so intriguing and insane. The amount of detail in this. Cinematography as well. You really feel like you're in the, what, is this 80s? 70s, 80s? Why can't I think of the year? I am drawing a blank on the year of the Zodiac killings. Wow. Uh, but it really evokes the time that the movie takes place in. So cinematography, you could have gotten something. It's just it's just crazy that Zodiac, one of the best directed films I've ever seen. Zero nominations. But coming in at number one, one of my favorite movies of all time. Heat. It is a crime. No pun intended that Heat was not nominated for any Oscars. This movie came out in 1995, which is a pretty good year for movies, but a terrible Oscars year. So that's the year that Braveheart came out, or one best picture. Um, I like Braveheart, but I don't think it's better than Heat or Seven, Usual Suspects, Casino. I think all four of those movies could have easily been in the best picture race, specifically Heat, because it's one of my faves. Um, I also think that Michael Mann is probably his best directed movie, and he's directed some excellent films, so he could have gotten some love. Um, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro, this is the first movie where they share screen time together. They were both in Gra The Godfather Part Two, but they didn't share any screen time together, so super anticipated for them to be on screen together, two of the biggest actors ever, so i Definitely think they both could have been nominated for this movie. Um, specifically Al Pacino, who is fucking insane in this movie. He is so fucking good in this movie, but he is crazy. It is fucking awesome. I love it. Uh, Robert De Niro is a little bit more subtle, more subdued. But I think he's excellent in this film as well. Val Kilmer, he is so, so great in this movie. Uh, this is right after... His performance in Tombstone, which is one of my favorite performances of all time. Love it. Um, I think he's awesome in this movie. Such a badass. Cinematography could have gotten some love. You really feel like you're in L.A. in this movie. And possibly the biggest snub of this movie is the sound design. Holy shit, the sound design in this movie. This is one of the best sounding movies you will ever hear. The um, opening scene with the armored truck robbery where they blow the back door off the armored truck and you like you hear all the um, windows shatter on the cars around them. Just excellent sound design in that scene. But especially the gunfight shootout uh, in downtown LA after the robbery. Probably the best shootout in film history. Best sounding shootout. That is like it's so the gunshots are so echoey and you just fucking feel like you're in LA in those downtown streets it is perfection that sound design so that is crazy I think that's probably its biggest snub among many others like I said I definitely think Heat could have won a lot of Oscars should have been nominated and could have won a lot uh I think it definitely should have won best picture sorry in 1995 like I said but Heat coming in at number one
Before I close out the video, I did want to mention that I know The Good, Bad, and the Ugly was not nominated for any Oscars. I would have included it on this list, but I've never seen it. I'm sorry, guys. I've never seen The Good, Bad, the Ugly. I'm sorry. I will, I will fix that very shortly. Just have to find the time to watch it. So once I see it, it could definitely be in this list. Just know that I know, I know it wasn't nominated for any Oscars. Okay. So anyways, that is my personal list. If you guys have any uh, movies that you that haven't been nominated for any Oscars, please share down below what you would uh, like to see. Also, uh, share your thoughts of what the Oscars are gonna be like this Sunday. Um, I'm definitely gonna be watching it. I got my chart filled out of what I think should win or will win. I'm a loser like that, so my wife makes fun of me all the time for that. Anyways, um, please like, subscribe and comment below and also check out my tiktok account like i said um, i'll be posting a video there shortly uh talking about some of the movies that i watched this past week and also a movie that i got uh delivered to my house yesterday it's a little unboxing video of that so i will definitely be uh putting those up very shortly you guys will not want to miss especially the second one so, like I said, Tan's Top 10, just look for it on TikTok. It should pop up right away. Please follow the channel. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time.